how to speak like you grew up in Fallensby, West Virginia. Words, phrases, and memories from a small town. In your eye. This was a popular taunt back in the 1970s. If you would lose, say, a volleyball game, uh, somebody from the other side would run up to you, say, in your eye, and they would point at their own eye. Never made any sense, but it is fun to say. The choke plant. This is the coke plant that's in Fallensby. Uh, it would smell so bad that when you drove by it on the school bus, no matter how hot it was, you'd still have to put up the windows. So we start calling it the choke plant. There was a par three golf course in Highland Hills. It had nine holes and a really mean lake on the second hole that I lost a golf ball in every single time. Where Mayhem Lane meets Route 2 was Joe John's, and in back of Joe John's was a driving range. We'd get a bucket of balls and hit them out towards the field. We'd try to hit those little number signs that would tell you how far you were hitting the ball. And then afterwards, we would go over to the Dairy Owl, where we would get the greatest invention ever, a half and half ice cream cone. Big Rock was a giant rock that kind of protruded out over a part of a valley. It was out in the wooded area of Fallensby, and it was a popular hiking destination. You could take a lunch and have a little picnic there, and some people spray-painted their names on it. The waterfall was one of the most beautiful spots out in the woods of Fallensby, and I'm told it's no longer there. My memory says it was about 10 to 13 feet tall, and at that age, everything seems big, so don't hold me to that. It's sad it's no longer there. Santa's fire truck. The fire department used to bring Santa around at Christmas time, and they would hand out little white bags with hardtack candy and an apple and an orange. This was in the 1970s. The last time I saw Santa coming around, he was in a golf cart, but I think they still do this to this day. Frankenstein's tomb is a brick structure in Fallensby Park. In the 1970s, you could get up on it and play on it. Then they put a fence around it and dedicated it to the people who probably built the thing in the first place. In back of Fallensby Park was a natural spring. I'm hoping it was a natural spring. And where it flowed out, they had sort of a basin built up around it. And that's what we called Frankenstein's well. It's no longer there. We would go to Johnny's Pizza and get some square slices of pizza, which was very common here in the Ohio Valley, and then walk up to the convenience store where we would get those wonderful glazed donuts. They would still be warm, and when you walked in the store, the smell of them would waft all over you. And along with that, you'd get a cherry slush puppy, and it made for the best treat ever. Going to the market six days a week, of course, meant going to the grocery store. But if you said it on a Sunday, it meant you were going to the Ohio Valley Drive-In in Fallensby and going to that big, huge, wonderful flea market that they had. It was fun if you were collecting something, walking along and seeing it on somebody's table and trying to bargain them down 10 or 15 cents. Usually I would take a card table and make about 10 bucks and then buy new stuff, about $10 worth, and take it home. So you were pretty much just trading stuff for stuff. This is sort of what we did instead of eBay in the 1970s. But it was fun and social. Two at the 10. Uh, the first number represents the time, two o'clock. And at the 10 means the Ten Commandment Monument in Fallensby Park. It's a good place to meet because it's close to the swimming pool entrance if you were going swimming or if you were going to walk around downtown. It's a good jumping off point. And that area is pretty nice because it has free, relatively safe parking. The building across from the post office had a roller skating rink on the second floor and we would go on Saturday afternoons. After 12 o'clock, of course, because 8 to 12 on Saturdays, every kid watched cartoons. Scooby-Doo, Clue Club, Captain Caveman, the action shows like Isis or Electro Woman and Dinah Girl. I would go every week, but I always came home full of bruises. Back in the 1970s, a uh, scout troop had Halloween insurance. So if on Halloween your windows got soaked or egged or toilet paper was thrown in your trees, they would come and clean it up for you. I think today this would sound more like extortion and probably wouldn't go over so well. St. Anthony Street Fair. 
This is where they'd block off the street in front of St. Anthony Church and School. And it was open gambling for minors. I'm not kidding you. I would take my allowance there and I would gamble. And I was eight years old. Um, my favorite game was over under seven. They would throw two dice. If you would guess right, you would double your quarter. Guess wrong, they take your quarter. And if it came up seven, you lost, everybody lost their quarter. They also had um, a big wheel that they would spin you could bet on. They had bingo, a whole bunch of stuff. Whole community showed up for it. Nothing like to have a taste of a gambling addiction when you're eight years old. But I'm sure it was for a good cause. The Garibaldi Street Fair. The Garibaldi Lodge would block off their side street and have food and carnival games like Dime Pitch. This is where you throw a dime and if it lands on a plate or in a glass, you got to keep them. It was a small event, but it was fun. On the hillside above the Marcus Street Bridge used to be some caves. And there used to be a path that you could walk up from the bridge. But then the hillside kept falling away and it finally disappeared. And then eventually they blew up that side of the hillside to expand the highway below. And in those caves, they found American native um, relics. And a lot of bats used to stay in there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fish day. Friday was always fish day because Catholics couldn't eat meat on Fridays. The whole town stunk like fish. If you went to Fonsby Middle School, they chose that day to cook all the other stinky stuff. Broccoli, cream spinach... Our cafeteria was in the bowels of the school, pun intended. Such poor ventilation, you had to pull your shirt up over your face as a makeshift gas mask. I like to think of it as Taco Tuesday with a religious bent. At Jefferson Elementary and Fonsby Middle School, the food was pretty bad. They would take a sponge and dip it in tomato juice and call it a pizza. But the one great meal, the only decent meal that they ever served us, was creamed turkey over biscuits. Everybody ate hot lunch that day. A regular was a regular lunch, and it cost you 50 cents at Fallensby Middle School. A super cost you an extra dime, and you got a blue tray. And they would punch a little star in your ticket to get it. And it entitled you to an extra slice of pizza or an extra biscuit with an extra scoop of cream turkey over it. A double was double of everything. It was like buying two lunches. The only problem was they didn't have a special tray for a double. So the only day you would actually get a double was cream turkey over biscuits, of course. And then the cream turkey would be so much it would go into all the other compartments and mess up all your other food or... It would dribble all over the floor as you were going back to your table and it would get all over the table. And the ultra mean people that worked at the school would make you go and clean it up. And the time you got back to your lunch, it had been looted by all the other students. So you really lost out when you got a double. At one time, Fallensby didn't have a library. So the neighboring town took pity on us and loaded up sort of an RV sort of thing and brought us books. And they called it the Bookmobile. Then they had a contest to rename it, and they called it the Book Van. My mother won that contest. Tip of the shoe, of course, is where you hid your money when you went swimming. And you had to take money into the swimming area because they'd ring that loud, annoying buzzer, and you would go over to get something to eat. And why is it you're in the hot sun, dripping wet, stinking of chlorine, but those Snyder of Berlin potato chips never tasted better. Before I knew Ben Franklin was a real person, I knew it as a national chain store, a small five and ten, and there was one in Fallensby. Me and my friend would go in looking for matchbox cars and cheap bags of army men. This sounds ridiculous, but my mother would go to the grocery store on Fridays and buy a big thing of milk. And then when it came to Monday, a milkman would come around and leave another thing of milk. And then two days later would come and leave more milk. We'd go to school and they would give us milk every day. If you left a note in the milk box, that meant you wanted something additional like chocolate milk or cottage cheese or that awful stuff my dad used to drink, buttermilk. 
We must have had bones like granite back in the 1970s. It's hard to believe, but there were only three networks at one time. So we were all watching the same shows. So half of our vocabulary probably came from the 1970s sitcoms. If we didn't like something you said, we told you to sit on it from Happy Days. If we loved it, it was Dynamite from Good Times. If we liked the way you were dressed, you were looking good from Chico and the Man. If we didn't like something you said, we would say, kiss my grits. Flo used to say that on the sitcom Alice and then later on her own spinoff show. If we didn't like it, but we wanted to know more about it, it was What You Talking About Willis from Different Strokes. Now, we had this on our notebooks, on our folders, on our lunch boxes, and even our t-shirts. It was cool. Happy days. Back in the 70s, I think it was the scouts that used to come around and sell the luminary kits. They would take orders and then they would drop it off before Christmas Eve and it would be a giant bag full of those little white waxed bags and candles and the sand and everybody in Follinsby would light them out on their sidewalks um, on Christmas Eve and everybody seemed to have Christmas lights lit up. Christmas Eve in Fallensby used to be truly magical. And that's the end of my list. If you want more, you could check out my other list, How to Speak Like You Grew Up in Steubenville, Ohio. And as always, it's me, Camroy, here on YouTube.